One thing about this con- well, I can call it a contest, it's called a contest. Um, for Florida Thespians, is that I have to have all of my receipts, and I have to have- basically, I have to have a budget. I am a person who, when I have things, I don't like to go out and buy more things. But for the sake of making sure I have the receipt as evidence, I'm going to use a combination of going out and buying some floss and using what little leftovers I have, if, if it's the same color. Because if it's not the same color, then I'm just going to have to use the purchase floss entirely. find any video that has like a definite explanation on how to do this stitch. Um, I did find this one video that gives me a pretty good idea. Then I'm going to drag my needle to the first point. And if I am not doing this horribly wrong, making a diagonal. So I have started doing the, what was it, I think it's called a double stitch, zigzag, and I am quite pleased because I have managed to get at least most of it on this piece. I set out with the goal to finish this smock before my senior year starts of high school, and that is in three days, including today, and tomorrow I'm going to be doing a lot in the swing room in terms of moving things around. And I don't know how much time I actually am gonna have to completing this task. I know I won't be able to do the neckline until I finish my stays because I wanna make sure that the neckline is the exact correct shape before I commit to cutting it out and embroidering it. I mean, I can always just play around with it and just do my best and guess where it should end and just finish the neckline but embroider it later. But I am seriously contemplating exactly what I will be accomplishing by Monday. Do I want the embroidery done on the edges, meaning the insertion seams, and just connecting everything together? So we have been cleaning so far, and bookshelf has been semi-organized. I have to go back and fix everything later. I have a bunch of boxes here. This is fabric, this is fabric. A bunch of boxes over here is fabric. Some A box over there is fabric. I have some fabric in the other room. It just, I have collected so many things over the last four or five years. So the tabletop has been removed for the table. And we're gonna get this pool table out of here. It's so weird because I remember this being green and not blue. I am so excited to get this room finished. Hey, -o. it is currently Tuesday. I have taken about two days of a break because I just started school and I'm getting everything organized. I made an Instagram post yesterday which took a while to form actually because my, um, my smock was all crinkled because I hadn't been hand sewing it. And when you hand sew, you have to hold it in a certain way. And because linen gets wrinkled so easily, I had to take everything off the dress form on my ironing, on my ironing board and iron it all out so that I could take, actually take photos and show people what I've been doing. So today I thought I would take a breather, recollect myself and sketch to figure out exactly what everything's going to look like. So far, I am just going to be doing the drawings for the undergarments to figure out my stays, which for those of you who don't know, the closest thing for you to associate with is a corset. It's just pre-1800s, um, 
we call things that you would consider a corset to be stays. And they're constructed differently than what you have in your head of like Victorian corsets and modern day corsets. So yeah, I am i haven't sketched in a while and I feel really bad about this. It's something I really have to get better about. But we'll see how it goes and hopefully this gives me a better idea of what exactly everything's gonna look like in the end. Auditions are in, last time I was told, late September, so I will see what will happen. But for now, this is my plan for the understructure. And on ca in case I haven't told you before, I want to finish this understructure before auditions, so that when I can have the whole thing done, and after auditions only focus on what goes on top, which is what everyone sees. Now there is this one layer that most likely will not be seen, also like extra, and it's just a petticoat that goes on top of this, if it's even necessary. I'll see once I start constructing if it's possible if it's possible to omit the petticoat that goes underneath the dress. Yes, I am aware it's a school night. Do I care? Not really at this moment. <laughs> I am currently gathering the top of the sleeve. This is the second sleeve. The first one is already gathered a little bit and pinned on my dress form to figure out exactly how it looks and to make sure everything looks correct. On Thursday, my mother is off and I will be able to go and purchase materials for the stays. Unfortunately, because of my budget, I will not be able to purchase synthetic rail bone for the amount I need, which is about, I think, 50 meters. It would cost me anywhere from $50 to $70, and that's just the boning when I have a whole pair of stays to make, which costs more money to buy the materials for the stays themselves. I am going with the alternative, which is to use a cheaper material that acts in a similar way to the boning I am going to purchase and that is my mother calling. So I did this um, insertion work dragging one thread through each for three seams and I kind of like the look but what my mom pointed out though is that it, it, look it may look a little better if it's more open like this and you can actually see the seam. I'm considering, well not really considering, I am going to have to do this because of something I'll tell you guys in a minute. Removing the stitches I did the other day and then I will be adding on to this piece. Now as you can see it ends in a rectangle shape and I already knew that this may serve me as a problem but I thought I had given it enough at the hem, like en enough of a circumference at the hem of the smock for, it, for me to be able to walk in it properly. But after a quick fitting, I realized that although it's manageable and I can walk with it the way it is, it would be much better if I finally just add more scraps to this piece right here to give it more of a triangular shape at the end, therefore giving it more volume and circumference of the hem. I have already cut pieces I had a scrap that was a giant rectangle, and so I folded it in half, cut it, and then I folded the rectangle in half to make equal triangles. So there's two in each. And each um, of these pieces are gonna go into the side of those um, of that side piece on the smock. So they're gonna go on either side, here and the other side as well. 
and that's going to require me to remove a lot of stitching. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but I have to do it to make this smock better. Um, surprisingly, the smock is actually giving me a lot more headaches than I thought it would. So you guys probably have no idea, but it has been a while since I've picked up the camera. So I fixed the side course. I had to add these triangular pieces to each side. And there's two of these pieces. So that means a total of four triangles that were added, which adds, it adds about eight inches to the circumference of the hem, which is what needed to happen because it was a bit too narrow. So help me have more room to walk. Now, the problem was that adding this took a lot of time. I had to do, un I had to undo all of this embroidery all the way up to around here. Then I had to unhem, take out all my hemming stitches, then take the pieces, put, put them together, sew them, then fell them. And keep in mind, I do all this by hand. And then after I fell them together, I have to go back and I have to hem it. I gotta roll it, pin it, hem it by hand with whipping stitches, then go back with the embroidery on this piece and then the other piece. So I got a little bit stressed. And the reason why I, you don't see a lot of that progress is because I got so stressed that I wasn't in a good mindset to really be recording and talking. Overall, I managed to calm down and manage myself in a way where I'm able to accomplish it. Everything should be smooth sailing. So now I have to do the insertion seams again. <laughs> Which is fine because before I when I did the insertion seams, I did them a little bit too tight and I think doing them looser so they can actually see a little bit through in between the seams would be would make it look more nice and appealing. open work and search and seams already done for the four side seams. I still have to attach the sleeves and do the shoulder seams and once the stays are done then I'll work on the neckline. I have yet to design the embroidery for the cuffs and the neckline because I haven't been able to get graph paper yet and I feel like I need graph paper to do it if my mind has been consumed with construction. So Embroidery is gonna have to wait a little bit because I think my brain got tired out from all the hand stitching. I am not quite sure what happened here. I am trying to do the shoulder seams and for some reason this piece on top is longer here while this piece on the bottom on the opposite edge is longer up here. I'm guessing somewhere along the line something got off grain somehow. However, I am not sure how, because I am pretty sure when I was pulling threads, everything was on green. I'm pretty sure I'll figure out what happened eventually, but for now, to solve the situation, I am just going to have to do something that wounds my soul, which is just so at the top where at least these things meet. Oh well. inside seam of the shoulder. This is where the sleeve connects to the rest of the smock, as you can see. I'm gonna be cutting a narrow piece of my linen, and then I'm going to be folding that piece so that I can be able to cover the raw edges and also that on. So now I'm gonna cut this, and then I'm gonna to get to sewing all those pieces. So I have pinned on this little bit here, the strip. Um, one side has been whipped, 
and the other one's about to get whipped as well. All I did was I cut a piece um, about an inch or a little bit more. I think it got, it got a little bit too wide, so I ended up tucking it a bit more underneath. I can't see this strip so much from the other side of the fabric because when you're doing strips, especially with fabric that's slightly see-through, you're going to be able to see that shadow of the whatever is underneath just a little bit. So I made sure to get it close and that it's not far out because then it'll be super obvious. And now I have some more hand sewing to do because this entire frock is hand sewn and yes, I do this to myself, but it's okay because in the end I'll be super proud and I can say that it's handmade and yes. The one thing I've learned about well, when it comes to hand sewing though is that yes, you can be listening to things and you can have your mind occupied in other things, but you also have to be very, very careful that you don't leave the world, <laughs> like that you don't stray too far away from reality. Because if you do, you're gonna make mistakes. And the mistakes can come in the form of your stitches starting to get irregular, or you're not paying attention to something you're sewing. For instance, during when I was making, when I was fixing the side gores, one of the reasons why I got so frustrated is because at one point I got so distracted listening to something, I didn't notice that I had spent an hour sewing a piece together backwards. But it's okay. I'm just gonna sew to my to my heart's content, and yeah. Not gonna lie, I really, really, really want to be done with this smock. I'm loving what I'm doing with it, but I really want to be done with it just so I can continue. Because I have a certain number of items for this costume that I want to accomplish before I have to even audition. Like, I want to feel accomplished and I want to make sure that when I'm presenting myself, I show that, yes, I have the skill to complete this project, please take me on so I can get judged because that would be amazing and I would have a lot of fun. It may look done, but it is definitely not done, much to my dismay. <laughs> so I have sewn in the strip, the gusset is in, it's a bit awkward right there where everything meets, but I find it acceptable. One thing that bugs me, other than it not being ironed, because everything needs to be ironed, is um, I noticed it when I was actually first cutting the fabric, but I couldn't. It couldn't be avoided because I had I, I had a limited amount of fabric. So there is like a warp in this fabric where it ref where it does not lay flat, and for some somehow the fibers in this area got stretched. That's one thing that's bugging me, but that cannot be avoided. And most likely I'll have this be the back instead of the front. Or maybe I will have it in the front. To be honest, you might, you're not even gonna see it because of the farthingale and the stays. Another thing to note that I wish I would have done better is been a bit more consistent with my zigzag stitches and I know I did pretty well with certain places but I think everything should have been smaller meaning I should have when I was in the hemming process of this smock hemmed these pieces way smaller so instead of this much brought it even smaller to move like a sixteenth that way the, the embroidery would have been smaller and then everything might be a bit more neater, although some spacing between each stitch could have been improved too. I'm thinking that I probably could have improved by marking a dot for where each stitch goes. I know that it would have been extra time, but that would have at least allowed me to have a bit more consistency with my stitches. It still looks nice. It looks really, really pretty, all my stitch work. But that's just a small critique I have for myself. And in the future, when I conduct stitches like this again, I'll make sure to take note of that and improve myself. Now, 
What is left of this smock, you may ask? Well, I have to still do the cuffs. And then we have, of course, the neckline and the back. And as I said before, I will tackle this once I complete my stays. So I can, I can design the embroidery, definitely. But I have to see where my stays fall so that I know where to put this neckline, how deep I want it, if I want to go higher, and whatever, you know? So, that leaves me with designing embroidery right now and continuing to try to work out with the printer fiasco to print the um, two scale pattern of the stays because I have to start the stays soon or else I'm gonna go crazy. And maybe I can get some drawing done as well because that's something I have to do as well. <laughs> and I'll get back to you all soon. I have to do... Oh, hi, Paco. I have to do the... And he wants to sit on my lap. <laughs>